Roman military tactics are still studied at military schools and staff colleges like Sandhurst to this day. Organized military tactics and strategies certainly predated the Romans. The ancient Greeks of Macedonia arranged themselves in a rectangular phalanx to fight. The Romans borrowed this as they borrowed any innovation that would benefit them, with concentrations of elite fighters and subunits with their own officers. The Romans, though, took this organization to new heights. Key to their success was the standardization of equipment and training, which included a short list of terse commands that every soldier understood completely. Gaius Marius's Marian reforms of 107 BC changed the army from an armed upper class into a professional body through which every Roman could aspire to social advancement and even riches. The Roman legionaries' loyalty to and trust of military structures was enormous. Loyal men follow orders. Rome's military was supremely adaptable, quickly changing to the challenge in front of it. But here are three tactics that stood the test of time. One the Testudo. It's easy to see where the tortoise formation got its name. Their uniquely large scuda, as the Romans' shields were called, allowed them to present a 360-degree wall of wood to opponents. The front rank of the formation would kneel behind their interlocked shields, over a meter in height. The second rank would hold their shields above the heads of the men in front, and so on. If all-round protection was needed, men on the flanks and at the rear could also present and lock their nearly meter-wide shields together their sharply curved fronts forming an excellent missile barrier. Some descriptions of the Testudo discriminate between heavily armed infantry with curved scuda and lighter troops with flat shields, who provide the roof to the tortoise. While it was possible to march a Testudo about, it would travel at an appropriately tortoise-like speed, and the formation was usually used in response to distant missile fire. It was deployed in sieges to allow troops and engineers protected access to the walls they sought to destroy before more permanent defensive structures could be built. Mark Antony, of subsequent Shakespearean fame, reportedly used the tactic against the Parthians, who had some success against the Testudo with mounted archers in 36 BC. 2. The Triple Line One innovation on the Greek phalanx that the Romans introduced was a triple line formation of three distinct ranks. Military seniority was the key to where a legionary stood in the battle order. Surprisingly, the least seasoned men, Hastati, made up the front rank. Behind them were the principals, and finally, the trarii, veterans of combat. In front of the whole loss of the unfortunate velites, the newest and usually poorest recruits, who would launch javelins at approaching enemies before melting back behind the trarii. The final rank, which could be some distance back, was the line beyond which the Roman legionary would not retreat. Falling on the trarii passed into common usage, meaning facing a last-ditch struggle. 